Some people in Russia are saying, you know, there shouldn't even be a word Ukraine. There shouldn't be a country called Ukraine because it's just Russia. Russia thinks of Ukraine as rebellious teenagers, and they're not adults. They, they don't have the right to decide. We have to rein them in, and they have no right to exist as a separate country going a different direction. One day, down in the mail room at Grace Seminary in McLean Hall, there was a little notice. It was, it was just this big, nothing flashy. It just said, Send International is um, um, hoping to start a language learning program, a uh, one year trial. And they're just trying to get people over and see if the Lord would do something. And so we applied. A few days after we applied, we got a phone call from Send saying, uh, Wouldn't it be great if you and and the Durham's could go together. And I thought, well, who are the Durham's? We come to find out their fellow students at Grace. And we were the only two couples that had applied in the whole nation. <laughs> and we lived on the same street. So they thought, obviously, we know each other. Um, and so they became dear co-workers for, for decades. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. It was about four months after the wall fell. The day we landed was the first official day of Ukraine being separate from the Soviet Union. They were welcoming people to come and um, accepting students to study. And, you know, there was even a little bit of a euphoria, kind of just all of a sudden people felt more like they're free. And in, in churches they felt that way, but just people in general. When we first came to Ukraine, uh, we thought, well, okay, we're gonna study the language. But we're not just gonna presume that, okay, we're here and you know, where do you want us? They, if they invite us, then, we're, then we'll consider that an open door from God. But if no one invites us back, then we traveled to many places. We met lots of people and um, nobody did invite us back except for the people in Zaporozhye and the head pastor there uh, over the whole region. He said, would you come back and work with me? And they wanted to start a Bible school uh, and they did eventually, that, that school is, is going to this day. Then the mission called and said there's a school opened up in the Russian city of Habarsk, way over on the far east side, northeast tip of, uh, of China. Uh, so that's where we served for many years. Far East Russia is, is humongous. It basically stretches from, if you were to turn it sideways, to uh, New York to California, a strip of like 500 miles wide very sparsely populated. We had to travel uh, four hours just to get to the next town. And it's just a little town. Far East Russia is where a lot of uh, believers were sent to die. Magadan, a place we went to a few times, that was an area where literally there's just fields of bones and they're bones of believers. Russia passed a new law that um, said each area can restrict how many foreigners they allowed to live in their area and we weren't allowed to stay there anymore and so we had already been working in the school for a long time and so we looked for places where there was uh, uh, other educational opportunities and so Kiev looked like a much better option. Ukraine was always the Bible Belt of, of the whole Soviet Union. Half of all believers were there in Ukraine and it really has the potential to become a sending country kind of on the order of of um, um, South Korea or Canada. Um, they're certainly probably already in the top 10 <laughs> sending country and they're, they're just getting started. So our goal was always to help build up the churches and to serve them as, as they requested and, and they wanted us to help with education. That was their request. When a rocket lands, yeah, some people have the direct danger and impact of that, but everyone's hurting. It's a, an attack against the whole country. And we've had hundreds, certainly thousand students, you know, that I've taught in the last uh, 14, 15 years. So how many others have, have suffered in this way? We don't know yet. There's uh, unknown and, but, and that's our home. Today would have been the last day of my next to last class. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll teach any more classes or not, but it's still our home. We haven't closed up shop there yet. We haven't said goodbye to people. You know, God is good and everything he does is good. And even when he allows war, 
he's got good purposes. There isn't such a thing as Russia, there isn't such a thing as Ukraine or the U.S. It's, it's all individuals when it comes down to it. And these individuals are all going to exist forever. You know, the countries are not, but the individuals are. And, and it's really these individuals are fighting against these individuals, and God is in control of each. You know, he's already decided all the, the, you know, the lengths of their lives and how this is going to impact this person, how it's going to impact this person. Fighting can reach to here, but it can't go any further and things like that. And you just have to remind ourselves that God, God is putting limits on all of that. It's not just running wild and he's using it for good. People's lives are being changed. Yeah, it's, it's costly circumstances, it's painful circumstances, but out of this, people who are fleeing, and there, there are people coming to the Lord. I mean, this is the only way for these people to be saved, maybe, is to have these harsh circumstances in their lives. And thankfully, he's got the wisdom to make those calls. Hopefully, Ukraine's gonna uh, emerge from this situation stronger and more prosperous, um, more stable, and maybe widely respected and maybe God would use that to uh, allow uh, the Ukrainian believers to uh, uh, even more effectively spread the gospel. And it's possible that it'd be the other way around, that instead Ukraine's gonna be swallowed up in Russia and then maybe those believers can have an impact <laughs> on this. You know, there's 115 unreached people groups in Russia and um, Ukrainians have been trying to go into Russia and reach those people, but of course it's very limited opportunity. It's just uh, the process has just just gotten started. We've had students from our school do that, go go to places in Russia to work. And maybe as a result of this war, maybe Russia will itself will become more open. We don't know what what that outcome is going to be, but we can believe that you know the people that God wants to wants to work in their lives, He's going to through this.